one time I was with a friend and he was telling me that love conquers all financial differences. Mm. And I thought, that's a misconception. Do you agree with me? Today, we will discuss how financial stress affects marital relationships and how couples can manage it. Hi, Rod. How do financial agreements typically manifest in marriage? What I've seen the most in my practice is disagreements around budgeting decisions, the spending habits. You know, some partners may spend more money on items while other partners may spend more money on experiences. Do you want to spend your money for the now or do you want to spend, save your money to spend in the future for retirement? Is your priority, again, is it to live it up and experience the moment or is it to have some stability and safety for your future? Unequal earning power, where one partner earns more than the other. Conflicting attitudes around saving and spending Spending. Any sudden change in how you relate to money can really turn you upside down. Building up a nest egg so that if there is a sudden change, you have some backup supply of income. Build up the habit of open communication, being honest with each other. You're managing the finances together, you're managing the responsibilities together. So love will take you a long, long way, but you also need that transparency, the skills, and the guidance to help you with your financial goals. So the idea that uh, financial stability takes care of every concern, <laughs> While it okay. can take care of a lot of concerns, uh, there is still the issue of the communication and the connection and love and trust and all the wonderful parts within a relationship that need to be addressed. Fostering open and honest communication, so talking to each other about the, the meaning behind why you want to spend the money in a certain way. What does it mean to you? What are the, the dreams that are associated with that? The, the third one that you mentioned is about shared financial planning, right? You said it, it yeah. has to be something that's mutually agreed. We simply don't know how to start. What's your take on that? Take a moment, you set aside some time, and you say to each other, where do we see ourselves in you know, 5, 10, 15, 20 years? Find the, the common goals for your, your future, and then building smaller goals to match the larger goals. How do you think you can reconcile these differences in consideration of the differences in background? Uh, where each partner has the opportunity to express their feelings and the other partner listens to them fully. Seeking support, you know, some, this is a big topic. But a big piece would be is just understanding what is the underlying values, what is the underlying goals and emotions with the way you're spending money. Is there such a thing like communication strategy between couples? Nonviolent communication. Uh, by violent. Yeah, <laughs> and it, 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 right, it has that reaction. Mm -hmm. Once a week, every other week, whatever it may be, but you're setting aside time that's uninterrupted, no TV, no phone, no kids, no pets, and you're talking about your relationship, and you're talking about how things are going, and you're checking in with each other. Enter those conversations in a calm and grounded place, so taking some deep breaths, writing out a plan of what you want to talk about, so some highlight notes or some bullet points so that you stay on track. Uh, while you're listening to your partner, if you notice yourself thinking about the next thing you're going to say rather than what they're saying, bring yourself back. In partnerships where a couple will be arguing and one partner will say, well, don't you understand this is stressful for me too? Mm -hmm. That's not really a question. That's more of um, you're trying to convince them, you're trying to lead them to a point. It's important to have your autonomy and your independence, but also if you're working together towards a shared goal, you should be upfront and honest with each other create a safe enough space to talk about this openly. It can be really vulnerable to seek support. Not mm -hmm. many people want to seek support. Yeah. But I think there's a lot of strength in seeking support. There's research out there that shows that couples that enter premarital therapy before they get married, where they just talk about their main goals, how they feel about money, sex, kids, things like that, helps their relationship far and beyond. I would recommend thinking of it as an investment like you would with personal training or gym membership as an investment in your physical health. Why shouldn't we invest in our mental health and relationship? Mm -hmm. You're uh, entering couples therapy to build the foundation for your relationship. Building up that pattern again of supporting each other, of open communication before those times show up can help build that baseline. Try to offer emotional support and tactical support. The emotional support would be listening to you. The tactical support would say, okay, let's work on your resume together and then focus on solutions. So rather than oh. looking at the past and saying, you know, well, you should have done this and you should have done that and why did you do this? Just look forward and think about what you can do that's within your control. And last but not least, uh, establishing shared goals.
what are my blessings, the blessings that I receive in life. Yeah. And it's helping me. Then reaching out to an expert like a financial planner or a therapist can really help rescue your relationship. What's your domain of expertise in the relationship? One partner's domain will be the finances. The other partner's domain may be mm -hmm. helping raise the family, maintaining the house, or operating a different part of the, the family structure. The same thing can be applied within a relationship by cross-training each other and understanding what each person's roles and responsibilities. If anything happens to the partner, they can just step right in. Financial stress doesn't have to ruin your relationship. There are many skills and strategies that you can learn and employ within your relationship that can help have these difficult but necessary conversations. And there's no shame in seeking out support. Remember, open communication, mutual understanding, and proactive planning are key to building a secure financial future together.